What we're trying to do is bring that water back upstream and the more we can hold it back in the upper parts of the catchment, the smaller the flow hopefully will be when it comes to the towns and cities. OK, so this is what you call a debris dam? Yes, we refer to it as a large woody debris dam. Uh -huh. A porous dam, it's not sealed. So the fact that there are gaps in this is absolutely crucial. Very much so. We only want these to function under high flow conditions. It's when we get the heavy rainfall, that's when we want it to hold back that water. So you're talking about holding water back. Is that in any way detrimental to the natural way the waterways flow? No, we're recognising that the way we've managed the land in the past has sped that flow of water off the land. We've lost a lot of our natural wooded river systems. These debris dams are an actual feature. So we're trying to recreate that. So how much of the geology of this landscape do you need to understand in order to know where to put the dams and that you're not causing more harm than good? I worked with Durham University in applying models to see what sort of difference this might make. And that sufficiently encouraged us to then go ahead with the understanding of the catchment, the hydrology and the geology, to determine where we put these. Yeah. And although they only hold individually a small amount of water, if you total that up over hundreds of dams over the whole catchment, that's a lot of water. There are 180 debris dams like this one in the area, but that's just the beginning. As well as slowing the rivers, this scheme is also helping to hold water on the land. Tom, we are in the catchment now, aren't we? Yes, we're in the catchment of the Vale of Pickering. The river's down there on the uh, background, just in the corner. Ah, uh, yeah. What are we looking at over here, then? What are they planting? Well, this is an example of one of the other measures we're trying, which is to plant woodland on farmland. Not just anywhere, but targeting soils that we believe have a high propensity to generate rapid runoff. Trees will help because they store water and release it through transpiration, but they can also have a very positive impact on the soil. Now, on the left, this is land covered in forest. Imagine each tree has a long, complex system of roots, and all of those roots are increasing the porosity of the soil. You're also going to have lots of organic material, dead, decaying plant material, that's going to also increase the porosity of the ground. And that means that this soil is going to absorb a lot of water, hold it for longer, and also direct it deeper down as far as the bedrock. Now, on the right, imagine this is farmed land. And imagine you're grazing this land. You've got sheep constantly trampling on the ground here, creating a compact layer at the surface. And that means that this soil is going to increase the risk of surface runoff. If I pour my coloured liquid in one position in our porous soil, and immediately you can see it permeating this soil all the way down to quite a good depth. Now, if I pour my coloured liquid onto the land that's been farmed, so you've got this thick, compact layer of soil, you can see immediately how much slower it travels through that compact layer. There is literally coloured water logging going on. You get all of this water having to go somewhere on the surface instead, and that's when you get problems. <laughs> 